Hi, everybody. I'm Reverend Therese Lee, and this is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Thanks for being with us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is that you have joined us in consciousness. We are grateful. As you're so moved, go ahead and put your name in the box. And if you have a prayer intention or a prayer request, if you would like to receive our e-newsletter, please let us know and we will send you and keep you in touch. We've been talking about The Lessons of the Turtle, which is a book by Steve Goodyear. And last week we talked about the turtle who received a gift after his accident when he fell upside down. And the gift, the takeaway for the turtle and for us always, the power to choose and the ability to respond. We're going to go on now with the rest of the story, but first let us start in prayer. Close your outer eyes as you're comfortable. Take a moment to get centered on your breath. We use this time to move from the head to the heart space and breathe. And every time we breathe in, we also exhale. And so we're centered together in this now moment. Grateful for the unity teachings that comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable, so to speak, to help us up our consciousness. Living loving presence, we're grateful for this time together, for the ability to open our ears and our mind and our hearts so that we may be all that we've come here to be. We pray this in the name and after the nature and under the authority of the living loving presence that is you and that is me. And so we are. Amen. So the turtle last week found himself upside down and unable to move after having slipped on a rock and tumbled down the hill. You can watch all my talks on our um, website, www.unityofhiltonhead.org. And there is a YouTube button you can punch that in and watch all the talks that we have recorded for you. As the turtle is upside down, he's mad, he's PO'd, so to speak, and he's trying to rally against the universe, asking why this happened to him. And he was joined in the story by Owl. And the Owl suggests that perhaps it might have been the rock's fault that the turtle found himself in this predicament. Hmm. Don't you love things that make you go, hmm. So through the conversation, the turtle and the owl that they're they're having, the turtle realizes that he chose a different path. And that's why he was alone, number one. And number two, that the results of his choice and all choices are his responsibility. Same for you and me. We get to make choices and then the choices are our responsibility. So this is when we let the other itis and that kind of stuff go and we get to be into the truth of us. There's a story goes on that the turtle is caught up in the sights all around him because he's in a new position, right? And he has a conversation with the owl. And the owl, of course, loves to talk with the turtle who is now turned upside down. And the turtle says to the owl, what are those spiky green things up in the sky? I've never seen anything like them before. And the owl says, those are the trees the pines, the spruces, the fir trees. They're everywhere. Turtle says, trees? Those are not trees. I have seen trees before. I see them every day. 
Trees are brown obstacles covered with bark. Trees are always in my way, Turtle says. Owl, taking a breath, says, Turtle, you are now enjoying the rest of the tree. You only saw the trunk as you crept along the ground and the branches and the needles. This is the best part of the trees, the most beautiful part of the trees from the owl's perspective. Turtle says, I had no idea that trees could be so magnificent. The owl says, there's a gift in the tree, like there was last week with you, turning right side up. And the gift, like all gifts, come in the form of a lesson. Owl says to turtle, are you ready? Are you willing? Are you open and receptive? Hmm. The owl goes on to explain to the turtle. Trees are really just seeds that have held their ground. Everybody breathe. They build strong roots. See, Mr. Turtle, owl says, within the tiny seed is the tree. The seed did not know that it was going to become this magnificent tree. You get to be amazed. I get to be amazed. And the seeds get to be amazed when they show up as trees. So I'm wondering, do you know how wonderfully magnificent you are? That that seed of the Christ consciousness, of the greatness, of the allness of God is within you, within me, within everybody, everywhere. Did you know it? Do you, are you willing? Yeah. All creatures, the owl says, honor themselves by realizing their potential. That's the takeaway for today. You and I get to realize our potential. Imagine, just imagine. We honor ourselves, you and I. Each time we take a moment to discover within ourselves what our unique purpose is in our communities, in our lives, in the world, on this planet. We get to honor ourselves, you and I, by discovering our passions, engaging our potential, looking and seeing our purpose, embracing our strengths. You and me, each of us has an important place on this place we call planet Earth. In the consciousness of the great allness that there is. Each of us has infinite worth. All right, Therese, so what? Well, when you and I listen to our hearts, we will discover the truth of us, our strengths that allow us then to choose our behaviors and adjust our attitudes. We get to look within. And then we allow ourselves to be spirit led. So the natural course of life can happen. It's instinctive. We are spiritual beings, first and foremost. Do you know this about yourself? 
this innate greatness built in you. You don't have to do one thing about it other than call it forth and nurture it, recognize it, engage it. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, there is no planet, sun, or star which could hold you if you but knew what you are. Unique, unrepeatable expressions of God. Say it with me. I am a unique, unrepeatable expression of God. And the poet Hafiz from the Sufi tradition says, I wish I could show you. I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your being. The astonishing light of your being. Do you know it? Are you willing to own it and claim it? We honor ourselves like the tree does to the seed within it by knowing ourselves. How will we let our light shine out into the world? How will we make manifest all that we've come here to be? How will we grow our roots like the tree does? How will we have new visions like the turtle has? Remember, a miracle is a shift in our perception. They happen all the time. So I'm wondering, what are some of your uniquenesses? Make a list of your strengths. What are your gifts that you're willing to give to this unity spiritual community to the greater area in which which you live and to the planet earth. We get to develop our gifts, nurture them, use them and give back and give back. Joseph Campbell, who's a great friend to unity said this, Follow your bliss, which means getting up in the morning and saying, hmm, what is mine to do today? To be on purpose, to make a difference. We get to identify our aim. Where is our focus and our intention? Create a mission statement. Do you have one? I hope so. If not, let me know and we'll create one for you. You'll create one. I'll help you. Mine is to raise consciousness to that of the Christ that is within all of us and also to love out loud. And that means sometimes I sit in the silence with you as I love out loud. What is yours to do? I'm not sure. And it doesn't matter what anybody else's is about. You get to decide this for you. So the degree to which you get in touch with yourself, you know yourself, you've looked at yourself, you've processed all of these things, which is a lifetime job, just so you know. It's not something you just do once. It's something I do every day. To figure out how will God express in, through, and as me out into the world today? How will I engage my Christ consciousness? Because remember, Christ was not Jesus' last name. It was his job description. It's your job description and mine as well. The purpose of our lives is to live our purpose. And in unity, we're not going to tell you what that is. We'll ask you to question your thoughts, question them again, and then re-question them after you sit in prayer and get spirit-led. You know, it says that if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. So what do you stand like a tree for? Roots, 
planted, grounded? What are your beliefs about? Do you know where they come from? How about your passions and your priorities? It's been said that you can know what you value by looking at your calendar and your bank account. Everybody breathe. How you spend your time and energy and money opens up our eyes to what we value most in life. I love it. It's a great reminder. So we get to have daily choices, right? Love that idea of choices. We get to be response able for the choices and open our eyes to see what is it that is ours to do today so we can move in the direction of the dream that we want to fulfill. Calling forth our strengths, engaging our ability to respond. One little step, it's all it takes. We get to lead with our heart, <sighs> allowing ourselves to be spirit led. We keep going within to make sure that the way we're going is in fact the way that we're being spirit led. What's calling you? What excites you? Spirit shows us when we spend time in the quiet and when we ask to be shown. Proverbs verse, chapter 19, verse 21 says, the human mind may devise many plans and it is the purpose of the law that will be established. The law is also a word that's interchangeable for Lord. And the law is that with which we are of the right mind in our right relationship to God, to understand what is uniquely ours to do and who have we come here to uniquely be. So the question we get to ask ourselves over and over and over again is what does spirit want me to do so it may express through me the way it wants to be expressed? Because sometimes, maybe for me, I'm not sure about you, my uh, ego gets in the way and I think I'm in charge. Anybody else have a control gift? Yeah. So we step aside the personality of Therese and engage the spirit of Therese so that I can then know in my divine mind what is mine to do. How will I show up? How will I honor the strength of the seed within me that stands tall? That has roots rooted. So when those winds come, I only wobble, but I don't fall down. Hmm. Hmm. Are you ready to honor the strength of you? Are you ready to honor the branching out, so to speak, and the flowers that happen on you as you become a tree in your life, nurturing that little seed that held its ground as you. We get to be like the turtle. We get to remember the power of choice and the ability to respond versus react so that we can stand in the strength of who we are as we nurture the seed within us. So the second week of this story, honoring the turtle, honoring the tree, standing strong calling forth the faith that is us. Yep, 
we get to do it. So I invite you to close your outer eyes for a minute. And take a moment and move from the busyness of your head down to your heart space as we go into a time of silence and reflection together. There's a saying that says, get out of your mind and come to your senses. And that's what I'm inviting you to do today, tonight, whatever day, whatever time. And so we close the outer eyes to go within and we use our breath as a tool to take us ever deeper within where each of us meets the God of our own understanding. And we breathe and we breathe again. We breathe and we breathe again. We acknowledge in the silence together the magnificence that each of us is, the wonderment of the seed that has become us, blossomed and grown into the truth of who each of us is. Grateful for the little willingness to be all we've come here to be, to say, yes, God is, I am, therefore I will. And we breathe into this knowledge. God is, I am, therefore I will. Say it with me. God is, I am, therefore I will. And let's take this into the silence. God is, I am, therefore I will. And we breathe. And we exhale. We breathe and we exhale in the silence. We take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for the many stories of life that keep us motivated and engaged. And as we bring our attention back to this time and this place and these sacred and holy grounds we call Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, I say thank you. Thank you for being with us whatever day, whatever time. We're grateful. And as you are so moved to practice your generosity, our website is www.unityofhiltonhead.org. And there's a practice generosity button. You can use PayPal or your credit card. And our snail mail, which I love, getting your notes and your cards, P.O. Box 1392, Bluffton, South Carolina, 29910. We're grateful for your consciousness in this time together. So go ahead and put your energy up to the screen and let's say our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is. And because God is, all is well. Many blessings. Reverend Therese signing off. Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Many blessings. Namaste.